And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I remember being enamored with Love Letter the very first time I played it. And I really liked the packaging of it. It came in this bag. The fact that it was a 17-card game was just amazing to me. They have recently republished Love Letter in the Kainai Factory Limited Edition, the original Japanese version, so you can get either one of these. Is there any differences? Well, minor differences. But let's say you've never played Love Letter before. Let's take a look at these. Well, we're going to take a look at this one specifically and see if it's a game you're interested in. now is I'm comparing the cards from the different set from the love letter set in the Tempest universe compared with the love letter that comes in this box with the original artwork and you can see there's obviously a very drastic difference I mean there's a big difference here between a clown and the priest obviously with artwork but the abilities are the same the only difference is here the seven abilities where the minister if you ever have uh, a hand total of 12, you're out of the round. So if he's ever with the princess or the general or the wizard, you're out. She just basically says if you have the king or the prince, you must discard them. They're very similar, but with her, you don't lose. With the minister, you do. Other than that, the similarities are basically just visual appealing. I mean, do you want this box or do you want this bag and how do you like the artwork? There are 16 cards that you will be using over the course of the game. You will use the princess, although there's actually princess with glasses or prince and you can use either one of them. The only difference between them and the princess is how they look. So, for example, you want to fall in love with the glasses princess or the prince, what, whatever. So you pick one of them. We'll pick the glasses one. All right. And then you'll shuffle the, the cards. There's 16 cards in this deck, and you will discard one of these cards out of the game. The rest of the cards, you'll be placing them and dealing one card to each player. The card that you deal to each player is that player's hand. So I will look at the card in my hand, and on my turn, I will draw a card from the deck. Now I have a hand of two, but I must play one of these cards in front of me. That card will do whatever the action says, and then the play goes to the next person who draws a card, and so on. Some of these actions will cause a player to be out of the game. When that person's out of the game, everyone else continues playing. If everybody is out of the game except for one person, then I win that round. Otherwise, when the deck of cards runs out, and it will run out quickly, everybody reveals the last card they have in their hand, and the player with the highest number, in this case it would be the general with a six, is the winner of that round. If we take a look at the different cards, obviously having the princess is the best card because at the end of the round, if you have an eight, you're going to win automatically. The problem is if you're ever forced to discard the princess for any reason, you're out of the round. So she's a dangerous card to hang on to. The minister is very similar. If your hand has ever a total of 12 ranks or more, you're out of the round. Um, so he can, he's also dangerous, but also useful because he's a seven. The general, you can switch hands with somebody else. The wizard, you can target any player. That person discards their hand and draws a new card from the deck. So the wizard, if you know someone has the princess, you can make them discard it and they're out of the round. The priestess, until your next turn, ignore all effects that target you. She's a very good defensive card to play. The knight, you secretly compare your hand with the target player. Whoever has the lowest rank is out of the round. So you can play the knight if you have the princess and knock somebody out of the round. Um, the clown, you can look at someone else's hand, see what they have. And the soldier, you can pick another player, tell them what card they have in their hand. If you're correct, they're out of the round. Now, when a round is over, the winner gets a token of affection, also known as a cube. And so you're collecting these cubes. The first person to get four tokens of affections is the winner of the game. Although you could play a shorter game if you want to, one round, two rounds, whatever. I can see reasons people would want both editions. Personally, I don't care about the Tempest universe. I mean, I think it's neat that the AEG is putting all these games together, but I don't know who these people are. I've played all the Tempest games. I enjoy most of the Tempest games, and I'm still not sure who these people are. Um, other than princess and king. But I just like the bag. I like the artwork on them a lot. This is fine, although 
it doesn't really matter in this game. See, Love Letter is a game that just keeps getting played and played and played and played and played. I know that there's some people out there who don't like it. In fact, someone in my gaming group wrote a very sharp review of how the game they had analyzed it and blah, blah, blah. But this was not a game meant to be analyzed. This is a game to look at someone and see if they have that card that you think they do. Guessing, bluffing, and a very short time. You don't have to play to four cubes. You could play to two cubes, three cubes, your choice. The game is just fun. I'm happy to sit down and play one round of this. It's a very neat little game. Um, it, I don't really think it matters which version of it you get, but it's one that I think most people should have in their collection. It's easy to pull out. It's easy to teach. It's so odd. You have one card, draw a card, play one of the two. Such an odd concept, but it's spawned a lot of copycat games, and some of those copycat games are pretty good because it's a neat concept, that of a small deck. So Love Letter, a game that I highly recommend. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door.